podcast uh, my next guest is my buddy well frank chinzano's buddy really i'm kind of stealing him off him uh ricky lees rick say hello to the world hello to the world how he's doing today ricky and i know each other from i uh, really frankie and i guess mikey lane uh, softball i think softball when you're playing with stake up oh no him. i never played with stake up i always <laughs> played against them yeah well, so do we <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Mikey's guys never really liked me because I ran my mouth a little bit. Um, Rick, you were born and raised in South Philly, right? Yes, sir. Methodist Hospital. Uh, you are 51? 51 by two weeks. Two weeks. Not even. 27. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you just turned 51. I stayed in during your birthday because I was a bitch that Sorry. night. And tell me about just... Growing up, so you have how many siblings? It's my just one one sibling, my brother Michael. Yep. Yeah, Michael's born in seventy five. I'm seventy two. Okay. Oh, and Michael's closer in age than me. Yeah. Oh, That's nice. Right. All right, I didn't realize that. Um, and you went, you know, so you grew up. Mom and dad were together. How long were they together? Until I was thirty three. <laughs> oh, really? And then <laughs> yeah, they got to. The... Yeah. Then my dad told me I think it was really close to my birthday. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, I think I'm leaving your mother." I'm like. What? <laughs> Dude, I'm now? 30, I'm 33. Now? What are you doing? <laughs> you know? But yeah, but it was kind of a wild thing. But uh, growing up, we were always a tight family. All of us were really, it was, uh, yeah. My mother worked. My father worked. Yeah. And we used to go to my grandmother's back in the day on uh, Chadwick and Moore. Yeah. My grandmother had the store f- dance fruit market. Oh, right. So we would go there. We'd hang out. We'd, they would watch us. My uncle would pick us up in the morning, take us down to the produce center. Yeah. When we were kids, then go back to the store and we run a store with him. Driving oh, really? crazy all day. Yeah, yeah. You know, my aunt, my whole, my mother's family was all up Chadwick Street and uh, 1700 and 1800 for Chadwick Street. So it was great. Do you, so, you still have a lot of family in and around the area? Uh, my mother's family was, they're all pretty, mo- they pretty much moved out of the city. Okay. Um, My father's family was all from West Philly and then they moved like Delaware County and things like that. So, it was really more close to my grandmother's side of my family growing up. Gotcha. But then as you get older, you start making, you start realizing it's your family. So hanging out a little bit more with everybody, you try and get in, try and see everybody as much as possible. Yeah. Getting old, you know? Yeah, I hear you. Best childhood memory, you got any of those? I, I the, the Stages of life memories that are greatest, I think. Yeah. Growing up, just being around, being around my, my parents and my family back in the day, like just Chadwick Street, we'd go for my... From my grandmother's house to my aunt's house to my other aunt's house, but there only there was four houses together on Chadwick Street. Yeah, it was my cousin, it was my aunt, my aunt. There was a house, and then my cousin. So we had all the backyards open. So we'd run around. Me yeah. and my cousin, me and my brother Michael, my cousin Christine, my cousin Jean was a little bit older than us, so she didn't hang out with us. We were, she was too cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. Age yeah. gap difference back then was so big. Was right. Big difference. All the ladies out on the steps and all that yep, stuff. The whole thing, yep. Going over to have tea in the afternoon. Yeah. And go gossip. How, you know. how about playing on the street? Would you you guys like play like whatever? Oh, uh, grown well then as the day ended we'd come back up to Hick Street again. So we had I mean, we grew up the street, we probably had ten or fifteen kids just up twenty five hundred block of Hick Street. Yeah. I mean kick the can, dodgeball, oh. hide the belt. Yeah, yeah. J- all, jailbreak. All that everything stuff. Everything like that, yeah. Every night. And in the summertime, we did that. Where did you go to grade school? Grade school, St. Monica's. Yeah. And then at high school, my mother saw the writing on the wall. I wasn't a good student. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you're not going to Newman. You're definitely not going to Newman. I'm like, all right, well, where are we going? She said, there's a school that will teach you a trade. I'm like, all right, I'm in. I went to Mercy Vocational High School. Oh, really? like Amy, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So talk to me about uh, where you, how were you in middle school? What was, what would your teachers have said about you? I was quiet. I was, I, oh, I, I didn't like school. Second grade, I got in a fight with a teacher. She really? threw, they threw me, Sister, Sister Jean, I think, or Sister Janet was the principal at the time in St. Monica's. Yeah. They threw me in the, in the stationary closet. <laughs> really? I did, yeah. I didn't like my teacher at all. Huh. I was, I was afraid of her. She just yeah. scared me. I have, uh, I have stories about getting in a lot of trouble in grade school as well. And then you go to, 
you, how about how about you as like a middle schooler? What would mom and dad say about you? Uh, I, I was good. I was we, we stayed out of trouble. I mean, I honestly believe I I led a sheltered life. St. Monica's. I always felt like like we didn't have to go anywhere. We were always just right up the street. We were right. around a corner. Yeah, like we were. It was a St. Monica's parish. You know, tight knit. Right. Everybody knew everybody, so you didn't have to do anything. You just hung out with each other. It was, yeah, you it was were like, fun. You were like three blocks away. From everywhere. From Every, everywhere, yeah. Everything you had to do was right there. You know, you had the, you had Frankie Frankie's grandmother's store, Eva's. Yeah. Then you had Angel's on the corner, candy store. Yep. Then you had Nick's on the 15th Street. You had Millie's at, on 15th Street. You had Peach's Shack on 15th Street. Right. We had our own stuff, little contained everything. It was the yeah. neighborhood was the best thing in the world. Right. Absolutely. All right, so you get into high school and you're going to North Philly, right? Twenty, yeah, North Philly, exactly, man. It's a, it's what was that? Hood. What was that experience like? I'm gonna tell you, like, it's gonna be. It's the first time I ever went to school with a black kid in my life. Yeah, I mean, it was like a whole new world. Honestly, I was meeting people from different neighborhoods, different like parts of the city. Yeah, it was so great. I had all, like a whole escape from. I hated school growing up. Get to ninth grade, and I absolutely love it. I'm meeting really? all these different people, different parts of the all over the city. Yeah, and then you had the South Philly kids. I was the only kid from this side of Broad Street. Okay, then I had all the Second Street friends, and we and the day I met them it was like the first day of school. I met them. Yeah, the very first day of ninth grade, we're at Twenty Ninth and Allegheny. It was, it was very easy to see the kids that lived around there and right. the kids that weren't from around there. Right, very. So for anybody that's not from Philly, Twenty Ninth and Allegheny is very much a black neighborhood. Always been. Always and, been. And, yeah, now it's part of Temple, and it's started getting uh, gentrized. But, uh, yeah, gentrified, yeah. Gentrified. Yeah. Um, so, all right, so you, so you go there, you're meeting all these kids. How, how do you, how were you as a student at Vo- the Votech? I, I was interested, and I was good in school. I was getting honors. I never had honors. I was <laughs> yeah, failing. Yeah. Like, I would fail every, every same amount, every year I'd fail. It was, it was, I was at summer school growing up. Yeah. Get to ninth grade, I'm, like, selling my mother's, like, who are, you, who are you cheating off of? What are you doing? I'm like, I, I, like, I did book reports. Like, my mother did my book reports in grade school. I just had no interest at all in being there. Right. And then I get to ninth grade, and it, it, I'm excelling. It's great. I'm having so much fun. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the opportunity with Mercy, which is different than Newman and Bach and things like that, is Mercy, when you get into 10th grade, you are allowed to go work a week and go to school a week. Oh, wow. So that's like a great opportunity. Like you had to have your grades up to be able to do that. You had right. to have your, your academics up and then your skill set. Yeah. Which I went to school for plumbing, which was awesome. I loved it. I had so much fun. Yeah. And that was the other opportunity I got with that is Mercy was very strict Catholic school. Very, they had a very, very mean disciplinarian. She was, she was really good at her job. Yeah. And uh, I would go there a week and then I'd go to public school a week, which I had never been to public school. I right. never even encountered anything like that. That was a whole nother th- world for me. That uh, where where were you at public school? That was called A. Philip Randolph Skill Center. It's it's on uh, Henry and Roberts Avenue. So we used to walk. I, we'd go to school to Mercy the same way we would, but then we'd have to walk over a bridge. Yeah, it was a train trestle. We'd have to walk over every morning, and uh, it, it was so wild. Like yeah, like I can't imagine letting my kid do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let uh, he went to to Roman, so I mean it was a little bit the same in a way, but right. Yeah, going was, into a different neighborhood. Yeah, totally different neighborhood. I mean, had to take uh, the subway, your son. You, yeah, subway. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we got lucky for a while. I was driving him every day to school. Which <laughs> he was yeah. very lucky with that, but uh, yeah, that didn't last long either. It lasted a year or two. So, what were you? What were you like outside of school? What was teenage Ricky like? So, in the neighborhood, I eighth grade, my mother saw writing on wall. I was saying so. Yeah. I was. I started drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, buddy. <laughs> drinking with my friends, you know, had a, had cigarettes. I was I got caught stealing cigarettes from my grandfather. Yeah. So she sort of right on the wall. So I started actually hanging out with my cousin, my uh, my cousin Rob, and his girlfriend at the time, Kim. Yeah. And I would hang out with. They were like four years older than me, so I yeah. was getting. I was able to do a lot of things that yeah thirteen fourteen year olds weren't able to do. Right. Was, and at the time, it wasn't that hard to get sneak in the clubs and things like that. And yeah. You know, I was hanging out with and, and bringing teen in the winter time, like going down on weekends with them. And my mother was very, uh, she was tough. She she really uh, didn't let me. It was always a song and a dance. I always had to fight to be able to do things. And hey, I'm going with my cousin. I'm going with my cousin. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always like that. And then right. my cousin used to hang out with his friend growing up. Yeah. Which is now my brother in law. My brother's brother in law. Right. I call him my brother in law. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. so tight. Right. 
I was hanging out with my brother's in-laws before my brother was. Yeah. It was like the coolest thing. Yeah. And uh, that's what we started. Like we all, we'd go to Poconos and things like that. And like, it was, it was, I got to do a lot of things as a, a young teenager. Were more you, than I ever did. Were you a ladies man back <laughs> then? No, no, definitely not. Yeah. No. I know. I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't know who I was yet. Yeah. I was still learning. I was just, I was having so much fun at school. Yeah. Coming home, going out with my, my cousins and all that. Those right. Those were older. Then I started going down to second street and hanging out with my friends from down there. Yeah. So I went from my mother being like, keeping me on a tight leash to now I'm, I'm, yeah, you're like, I'm, I was able to do whatever. My grades were good. She didn't, she was like, Oh, be good now. Yeah. But I, she still kept the leash. But I mean, it was kind of fun. I, I was having a really good time. My, my, uh, my so, early to mid teens. So anybody that knows you now, and, and even when I met you, I don't, we, I guess we've been friends for five or six years now. Yeah. But, um, always known you as an outgoing guy. Were you outgoing back then? No, I think after, as I started like around 18, 19 years old, I started hanging out with my other cousin, my cousin Robbie's brother. Yeah. Who was, he hung out with an older guy who became one of my best friends at the time back then. And he actually passed away, but he's still one of my, I would say one of my best friends ever. Yeah. Um, we got, he, my cousin took me around to, so we lived on the 1800 block of Chadwick Street. Yeah. 1800 block of Bancroft Street is where the Vikings started out with the, with the, they started, the South Philly Vikings had their club there for like the first year or two. Yeah. And I walked around with my cousin and I, I we were hanging out and I started talking to all these people and I think that's where I started to get into the parade a lot. And yeah, my cousin's like, we're not going to the comics this year. We're going to with the with the with a fancy brigade. I'm like, I, dude, I've never been in a parade. I have no idea what they're talking about. Like, how's that happen? Yeah. So we went around. I was we were on the Alpha New Year's Brigade. It was on 20th and Mifflin. Right. And uh, we started going around there, and I was oh, we had so much fun in that place. That yeah, that place is where I became very comfortable with my own skin because right. <clears throat> the older people that were involved kind of didn't like the younger kids that were coming in. I mean, we were we were children. We we're twenty, but I mean, we we're yeah, you were kids. Now. We were tonight. kids compared to them. Yeah, and uh, first two years we were part. It was a solid club, and then the older people were like, "We're getting out of this. We're getting done. This is the end of it." And then we took over, and it was for a few years. Probably it was probably about I would say I was in the club four or five, possibly six years. Yeah, and it was. I became the co-captain. I was the president. Like the club got stripped down so far, there was only a small group of us. I got my brother involved. I got yeah. my brother's friends involved. I, Lane, we used to come around. Lane lived around around the corner from us. He lived on 18th Street, I think. Mikey, yeah, yeah. So he would he would run around then. I mean, we had bashes. It was insanity, man. It was insanity. Like, yeah, we had a ball. That's where I actually, I actually met. I, I knew my wife, my ex-wife at the time. I knew her of her because I was hanging out with my sister-in-law. Yeah. Not met my sister-in-law yet. She yeah, was yeah, just, yeah. you know, she was my my friend's wife's sister. Right. I went to school with you all my life. I knew her all my life anyway. Right, right. Your sister-in-law. And I started now. hanging out with my sister-in-law now. So we're just hanging out. And, and I wound up meeting my wife. And then it was the craziest thing. My brother started seeing Gina. Yeah. So my ex-wife and her best friend and it was me and my brother so it was like it was the craziest thing yeah yeah it, it was it was really good times then it was really it was a lot of fun yeah you you go into and you start being with this new year club you start running it would you learn a lot about yourself then or, or? i learned that i i learned like come out of my shell like i just yeah i i, I realized that everybody's everybody everybody has their own insecurities and things yeah. like that and like who was afraid to dance in front of people and yeah yeah like well, we we would just get sometimes drunk and just start, start doing drill. Yeah, and you'd get that one person in the corner. You just grab them, bring them in, and they had a little bit to drink, and boom, they're 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 all over all, all ready to do. Like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever! And yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, people make mistakes when you're dancing. You just cover it up. It's fine. Everything's good. And then yeah, I mean, we had we had a lot of fun. That yeah. club, that yeah, that club really that that. I cracked my shell there. It was that I was your first like leadership position in your life? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how was that? How how was it like running something like that? I I don't I don't. I'm gonna honestly say it was not anything different. I didn't change the way I am. I'm me. Yeah. I I try and I want to include everybody in everything I do. I right. want everybody to have fun. I don't want anybody to ever feel 
like oh it did sit in the corner like oh he oh rick is over there i I don't want i want everybody i bring everybody around you see yeah yeah you're you're great at it i think i I try to include everybody even people who i might not necessarily like like as a person but you want them to feel comfortable i want them to feel comfortable around everybody like like our neighborhood i want them to feel the same way i did when i was a kid right you know be part of it yeah being part of it feeling uh you know a part of it and a part of the group right i mean You've always done that with me. I guess maybe that's why we're sort of fast friends because I like that about you. You've always, like, even when I'm sitting in the corner and, uh, you know, uh, half asleep or whatever, you always make sure I'm okay. Yeah. If it's, you do that it's, with everybody, though. I I do it with the, more pe- with the people I like the most. I of deal course. with the most. But I mean, I, I, if, if I see people are bothering somebody or yeah. there's like an incident going to start, I'm like, yo, I just try and deflect it. I don't even go over and stay, stop fighting, don't anything. Yeah. I just pull somebody off to the side and yeah. go outside with them, dr- just have a drink or let them smoke a cigarette or whatever the case may be. It's, yeah. I just, I don't like confrontation. Yeah. I don't mind confrontation. I right. like confrontation, but I don't want other people to be, I don't have to be drawn into somebody's conflict. Yep. Understood. That's, yeah. All right. I want to take a step back real quick. We, we were talking about high school. Um, any crazy stories, high school, crazy stories. So <laughs> you gotta high give me school one. was fun. So I can give you out of high school yeah. going into, not in my building, but going to high school. Yeah. Back in the not era, it was late eighties. They had the wolf packs. If you remember that. Yeah. Just a bunch of girls on the subway. They were going around beating people up. <laughs> yeah. There were all, there were girls going, I think they were going to girls high. I think I'm not even positive, but I remember they came down. And they smacked my one buddy from Second Street. Yeah. And I was always taught not to hit a girl, yeah. things like that. But all my friends from Second Street, I don't think they were taught the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the girls smacked my one buddy, and I've never seen a bunch of dudes get up and, and just brawl. Like, we were beating, we were getting our asses kicked, too. Yeah. But we were beating them up just as bad. Yeah. But the cops came in, and they're like, what happened? Like, they sm- they snuck them. And that yeah. was it. And yeah. There was nothing, there was no, it, that was the funniest thing. Back then, it wasn't a race thing. It was just, people were being stupid, and yeah, stupid met stupid. Right. And and, and it ended. It, that was it. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. no guns. There was no bats. I mean, school bags, yes, but right. that was that one time. And then there was another time I was, got out the subway. We used to get off of Broad and Allegheny and wait for the bus. Yeah. And I got out, and on all four corners of Allegheny Avenue, Broad and Allegheny, people were screaming. They were throwing bottles and things like this. And this one older black lady comes up to me. She goes, sweetheart, you better get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, for real? She's like, you better get out of here. I ran across Allegheny Avenue because you had to go to the southbound. I got on the subway and went home again. My mom's like, what happened? I'm like, mom, they were fighting. I had to come home. I I'm, I had to do it. The lady told me to leave. Yeah. She put on the 12 o'clock news, and they sh- there was a riot. At Allegheny Avenue. And oh, really? That was a wild thing. Yeah, that was out of school. In school, in school was, it was, I've never seen so many crazy things happen. Drugs in school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've never, yeah. It, it was, was just nuts. It was, it wasn't out of control. Yeah. Because, like I said, it was a strict school, but people got away with doing things. People yeah. did a lot of things. Yeah. And yeah, there was some drugs in school. Smoking in the bathroom was not just cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was crazy. It was a lot of fun, though, man. It was a lot of fun. You have any like long term friends from? I keep in touch, but I have they're in my phone as MVH MVHS Mercy Vocational High School friends. Yeah, it's Finn Brian Heston. He's from Second Street. Yeah, I have Jackie Gross. She was like Kensington Fishtown. I have Kelly Flanagan. She was in East Falls. And Tracy Fritz, I don't know where she lived at, but we're we're still friends now. We're still That's friends awesome. now. That's all. Yeah, we still happy birthday to each other and all that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, we we look we still if somebody's not feeling good, you hear about it, you call them. Yeah, it's still it's a long time out of high school. What, what year did you graduate high school? 90. 1990. 1990. Chubb, I jumped upon a scene. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And what what you do after high school? Uh, I was working at a twelfth and more the faucet place. I was going to school. Okay. That was the that was the other crazy thing. I mean. Going to school a week and going to work a week. Yeah. Work, going back to school with a knot of money in your pocket. Yeah, it's all. It's awesome. all legal and yeah. it's real. It's like, I got a job. I ain't got to go. I ain't got to go to school next week. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was so awesome. That that was that was the cool thing with that school that you were able to do that. Is that was, still like that today? Do you know? I honestly don't know. I know yeah. they changed the name from Mercy Vocational High School to now it's like Mercy Technical yeah. Institute or something like that. Something but, like that, yeah. 
like MIT. I was trying to make them sound better. I guess I don't know. I feel like I wish that they still had those type of programs for kids. Like I, you know, I, I again, you know, I I'd spent a lot of time in college, and uh, but I I'm not sure that I believe that it's for everybody. Oh, definitely, definitely not for me. There's no doubt, absolutely really? no doubt. Yeah, no way. I could not. No, I. It, and and I'm not sure, like the amount of money that people spend, and you come out, and that you could probably do the same thing without the degree. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to be a, an accountant, obviously you need a degree. Or if you're going to be a lawyer, you need a degree. Right. If you're going to be a doctor, but there's a lot of things that you really don't need a degree. That having job, you know, having some, um, you know, experience, job experience would just do just as well. You, you know. Right. I mean, unless you're going to become a teacher. Right. I mean, yeah, the art, the literary arts. What do you, like, yeah, you need to be smart to teach a kid. I believe that you also have to be patient, to be right? Able to and teach you, a kid. Well, you need a certificate, which right. re- requires a, a a degree, right? right. But, so, I mean, that's what. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sort of trying to convince, you know, trying to make make that point to my kid who's getting ready to go into college right now. So, but anyway, um, so you graduate high school, you start working. I was working. It was. It was yeah, I was working at the school in plumbing. I was going to, I was being a plumber. I was doing all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, they tell me that they're going to be shutting their store down at 12th and more. I'm like, all right, they're, they were getting slow. I'm like, all right, no problem. I wound up meeting up with Danny McMicken again. Dan, Danny McMicken? Yeah, speaking. Sorry. Danny McMicken, yeah. Uh, his grandfather ran the union, six, I think it was 690. Yeah. And, uh, I'm talking to his grandfather. He's like, yeah, you got to come in. You got to take the test and all this fun stuff. I'm like, he's like, you'll be okay. You know, it's one of them hookups. I'm all happy. I'm like, this is going to be great. I'll become a union plumber. I'll make a ton of money. It'll be perfect. Yeah. I go take the first test. He goes, you did a great job. Blah, blah, blah. We have to come back for the written part of the test. And then, then, we'll, then we'll get you we'll get you in. I'm like, all right, perfect. Then his grandfather has a massive heart attack. Oh, man. My connection's gone. Ah. Uh. So, and I'm, now I'm like, what am I going to do? I try to go take the test. I do everything. I do well on the test, but not enough to get in, you know? Right, yeah. So, I'm like, what am I going to do with myself? Like, I, I can, my, I'm losing my job because they're they're closing. I try to work with different people. It just, they, they weren't busy. It was like, the, it was like 93, 94-ish. Yeah. Things were getting a little slow, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is not good. So, I um, wound up running into... Another friend of mine's uncle, who was a manager of Pet Boys, and he's like, "You need a job." I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "Come on in, become an assistant manager." Oh wow! So I I, I go from blue collar to white collar, office job kind of thing, but you know, retail. Right. And I'm like, "Oh man, this is not the way I thought things were gonna go." But uh, I became an assistant manager. I was working there. I made decent money, more experiences, leadership roles, uh, everything like that. Yeah. And it was it was fun. It was working, but I wasn't making enough money. And I was now seeing Michelle. We're together for a while. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget Jim Mertens was his kid's name, and uh, he was my Cintas driver, uniform driver. Yeah. He's like, he goes, I know you don't get paid here. He goes, I guarantee, I'll bet my paycheck. I'm like, come on, dude, you're working driving a truck. He goes, I'll bet you my paycheck. I'm like, all right. I bet him my I bet him my paycheck to his paycheck. He came the next week. He showed me his paycheck. I'm like. I said, I, you, I've lost a bet. He goes, no. He goes, fill out this application. He goes, I'll get paid if you fill out the application and get hired. I wound up getting hired in Cintas. I think it was June of 97. Yeah. Started making crazy like money back then. Like I, I started, this is the crazy part. I started, I got, st- my starting salary was $36,000. Yeah, yeah. Two months later, it was 38000 I got a bump. Two months later, I got my own route. Now I'm making forty. <laughs> I went from making like maybe thirty four when I was at Pet Boys, you know, working yeah. weekends and everything like that. Now I'm making forty grand in six months. Yeah. I got vacation time. I got all yeah, this kind yeah. of great things. I'm not working horrible hours. I'm working phenomenal hours. Yeah, I got to meet so many people from there. I actually used to drive on the tarmac at at the airport because I had uniforms for the guys who filled jet planes. Oh wow! Like, like crazy, like just things you never thought you'd ever encounter. Yeah. D- delivering uniforms. Right. Then, uh, yeah, I, I had some, a lot of crazy stories with that job, too. It was fun, though. Um, And th- how long were you at that job? I was there almost 13 years. Oh, wow. Deli- yeah. which, a delivery driver, basically? No, I actually got, I, when I'd like something, I, I dig into it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I was working there, and uh, one of my partners there, we're, we both drove trucks, but he's like, uh, he goes, I'll bet you, he goes, I'll bet you I sell more out of the catalog than you do this month. 
we used to get paid on it, so it was like, yeah, I'll do that. And, we, and we'd have a head-to-head battles every month, every month. Right. It got to the point where they're like, you should teach other people how to do that. I'm right. like, I'm in. And my bud, the kid's name was Rick also. Right. So him and I start teaching how the guys how to sell out of catalogs. Right. It was, it was phenomenal. I would go in and, like, I had, they set goals, but they were so easy. Now, yeah. I don't, not only seeing... I'm not only seeing my customers, but I'm seeing all of my driver's customers. Right. And everybody always wants to try and help somebody out. You know, you got a sale on uh, on jackets this month. You know, we'll give you 20% off. Yeah, okay. It, right. And it was so phenomenal because I got I didn't get paid from the from the making that money from the guys. The guys made it. So then they want to work with me more. Right. So now I'm there's people like I want to go with Rick. Like there's there's sign up sheets as to in the beginning they didn't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. Now I'm teaching these guys. These guys are making money. Yeah. Then I get hired into sales. They're like, you, I blew out every number that they can give us. They couldn't pay us anymore. Like, they capped us now. Like, we're making so much. They had no idea that we're going to be making that. Right. So I went from making, like, again, 34 to 40. Now I'm making 60, 70. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm making something to myself. And I didn't, yeah, yeah. I have no, no college behind it. And it right. leads right back into it. Explain that to me just real quick. You're running a route, right? You, you're delivering uh, different. You're de- delivering uniforms to different companies. Yeah. And then they have a catalog, a business, and then sort of you sort of try to up- upsell them. Upsell. That's all you're doing is upselling everything. Yeah. That's all you're okay. doing. So, it got to the point where they, they're like, we, you have to take another path now. What do you want to do? I'm like, I'm not going to management. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in charge of guys on routes because if you were. And they called out. You had to run around. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not doing that no more. I ain't doing that. Yeah. So I went into. They gave me a facility sales job. I was selling to a pizza shop, bath towel. I mean, aprons, uh, bar towels, rugs, custom logo mats, things yeah. like that. And I, I did phenomenal there. It was awesome. I three years. I was able to take. I actually took my. <laughs> I took my, I, me and my ex wife went. We went on uh, vacations together from paid by paid by work. It was phenomenal, all inclusives, yeah. everything like that. Yeah. The one time we were going, it was at the Orlando. We didn't go to Disney. It was at Epcot, not Epcot. What's yeah. the other one down there? Universal. Universal. Okay. I got my brother and my sister in law to get plane tickets to go down because we had a room. We had a room with two king size beds in it. Like they they took care of us when we were there. Yeah. I got them to fly down. I got them passes to take my kid to the to the park. Four days we were there for free. It was like awesome. it, was, it was such a great little sneaky thing to do. It was so much fun though. Yeah, yeah. But then uh I they yeah, they offered me a position in a different part of the company. I went to it and it wasn't the same like kind of regiment and they didn't have no base for it. So it was horrible. It was the worst thing I ever did. I, I went, I tried it. Yeah. I got in a fight with my boss. He was doing coke off the <laughs> <laughs> He was doing coke off his desk. I caught him, he came after me. It was a whole thing. Yeah. But, uh, I wound up quitting because they didn't fire him fast enough. Right. You went on to different sales jobs? I went in, yeah. I, then I worked for uh, Republic Services, and another job before Worth USA where I worked at for the last 12 years. Yeah. And now I'm at my, I love my job now. I'm at HD Supply. It's phenomenal. Absolutely the best job I've had. What makes you a good salesperson? What do you think? I don't treat anybody any different. Yeah. Any, if I meet you at the bar, or I meet you at behind your desk, I'm the same person. I don't. I curse in front of people. Yeah. I shouldn't. I curse, you know. I'm just me. But you're 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 a person. You're the same person all the time. Yeah. I I don't. I'd rather build a relationship with you. And make you buy off me then, and I'll, and I'll work for it instead yeah. of just going in and be like, yo, you can just buy this for a dollar right now. You know, it's cheap. I don't do that. If yeah. It's not a good sale for somebody. If I wouldn't buy it, I wouldn't sell it to them. That's the other thing. It's integrity, kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be that because you always hear that. Oh, you're a crummy salesman. I'm yeah. not. I'm not, I, I'm here for you. It's my job. Right. I, the more I give you, the more you're going to buy from me, the more we're both going to be good at what we do. Right. Yeah. That's the yeah. way I feel. No. So I was taught this, and this is the craziest thing. When I was working at Cintas, I had Wildwood. I had all down the shore. I had all the shore points. Yeah. My manager at the time was like, he goes, just think of this. He goes, I'm going to tell you this. He goes, I had this area before you. He goes, I was with the guy who was training me. And the guy went bananas. He was screaming across the boardwalk, you're a thief, blah, 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 blah. He goes, just imagine if you're walking with your wife and kid because you have a house down here. He goes, imagine you're walking down the boardwalk and they do it to you there. Yeah. He goes, think about that. And I did. And I never, it was like the first two months I was in sales. And I strictly believed in that. And I would never do it. And it got to the point where 
we would walk down the boardwalk taking my son to Maury's Pier. I'm like, come on in, get some pizza, get some you know, ice cream, get your kid ice cream. Yeah. And that's the way I've always, there's never, I don't, I'd never want anybody, like, it goes in life. I don't want that person to be like, oh, he's not a good person. Right, yeah, he bullshit at me to yeah, get a yeah. couple bucks. Right? Like for, for a while, for a while. You get a bigger paycheck for one week, and then you got to run for the person the rest of your life. Yeah. Clojure, I'll run away with that dude, run away from Clojure for $20. I mean, I think that's such a valuable lesson for anybody. And again, a lot of, there's sales in almost every type of job, any white collar job. If you want to be, you have to sell yourself or sell a product or, you know, sell your service. And your integrity is everything. Life is sales. Right. People are afraid of sales, but you're you're in sales. You sell your you you sell yourself to get a job. Yeah. Then you're selling yourself to your boss because you got to make sure that you can do everything you say you do. Right. And it, it, it life is sales, but people just don't take it. Like, they don't they don't process it that way. You know, and and what I do and what I've done in most of my career, both in the law and now working at a casino, I seen uh, I see a lot of people that I like to say, you know, like dress up real nice and they got a really great smile and talk a really great game, but they're fucking empty. Yeah. They're horrible. I, 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 it's not my style of people. You can see who we hang out with. Yeah. I mean, I, we don't have any, any of our friends are like that. And I think that's why we're friends and we're friends with everybody we're with. Yeah. We don't have any of them empty them shell people at all. Right. And you can make, you can make it pretty far doing that, I think in life, but at the end of the day, you got to go home with yourself. Right. But I think even at our age now, we don't, you can you can smell bullshit very Wrong. easily. The bullshit meter goes off. You being a yeah. lawyer, yeah, yeah, you can smell bullshit. Yeah, I mean from a mile away, right? I mean you you're not always going to get it right, but I'd say I'd say my you know my bullshit meter is about ninety percent. Oh, I'd say yeah, I'd say even higher than that. We see we, we yeah you and I being out with you, we can instantly. Pick yeah, up. I mean I'll just I'll just leave the situation. You, you know, walk I mean? away. Yeah, that's, I think like I, I said, mean that's the only way. That's the only only way angry Dave stays stays in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's uh, all right, step back. So I right, we talked about basically your your work history. Now you talked about your wife, who eventually your ex wife. But talk talk to me about that relationship when that starts. I guess when you're early twenties, early twenties, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah very early twenties, yeah, we're, we, yeah. And you have one son together, one son together, yeah. And he's how old? He's twenty three now. So talk to me about having a twenty three year old son. You're going through it now. You're, you're held your son. You're oldest now. He's 17, almost he's 18. 17. So he's still an asshole. He thinks you're an asshole or no? Uh, yeah, he's a very nice kid. Right. But yes, he thinks I'm an asshole. Right. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. And it, it's crazy because I, I, I meet people like, oh, I got an 18 year old. Oh, he still thinks you're an asshole, huh? And they look at me like, why? I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. You're not the only one. Right. You know, yeah. wait until about like 19, like I'm teetering 21. And it starts to turn. They start turning and you're like, they're like, yo, dude, you're that cool dude I used to hang out with when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. And it's phenomenal now. I love I I love hanging out with my kid. I love it. It's yeah. so much fun. It, it's I get called I get told often that I have a great kid that's even better. Yeah, yeah. He's so respectful. That's as a parent, you know, that's all you want to hear. Right. It is. You have you have such a great kid, he's such a nice guy, blah blah blah. Yeah. That's all you want to hear. It that's is. all you want to hear. You wouldn't hear you wouldn't hear from from adults, but then when you're you're your son's kid, your son's friends come up to you and you're like, yo, he's a great dude. Like, like yeah, he's yeah. a great friend. Yeah. Yeah. We're, what I else were you it. trying to do? Right. Right. That's it. I mean, you just want to make the kid better than what you were. So how was it raising him growing up? So we were divorced. Yeah. We separated. Um, still in life. <laughs> she's still my ex-wife. Yeah. She's, she's the mother of my son. So yeah. I don't care. You right. can have a boyfriend. I had girlfriends. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I still love her. She yeah. was with my mother today. My mother's in the hospital. Right. She was. She brought my mother flowers today. That's the Amazing. kind of relationship we have. Right. I went over to her house last night because I needed, I needed a Mucinex, and she had it. Like, yeah. And I fixed her television. Like, there's no. She's still my ex-wife. I. She's still my wife. Right. We're just no. we just, we're not together. Yeah, you're still family, right? You're yeah, we're family. Right. It's exactly right. I mean, yeah, we don't yeah. have a very big family. She don't have a very big family. But again, she's the mother of my son. Yeah. That's so you are 51 years old. You got a 23 year old son. You are single now. What's the next 10 years look like for Ricky Lee's? I don't have that planned out yet. Things are changing. The business shut down. I had the brewery. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I don't, um, I have like four paths that I'm trying to make sure things go right. I'm going to keep myself healthy. I want to keep my friends happy. I still want to hang out with my friends and still want to have a great time because the older I get, the older my friends are getting, the older their kids are getting, so we'll have more time to hang out again. 
Right. We're adults now. We can do a lot more things than we were. We have more free time. Yeah. A couple more bucks. Yeah. A couple more dollars in your pocket, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I, I, I just, I just want to be happy. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. I, I want to make the least amount of drama I have is the best part about it and just run from there. I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about you. You are a cancer survivor. I am. Talk to me a little bit about that. So I found out I had esophageal cancer when I was 42 years old. That's a nine year, nine year survivor. I didn't, I went to the doctor not expecting to hear that. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> again, at the time I was single now, um, I'm not with my ex-wife. Um, I was seeing, I was seeing somebody at the time and her and my brother, my sister-in-law were like, he, when he eats, he does a hula dance. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So they caught me and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm like, I'm making my food go down. I have no idea. So right. it, they're like, we're making a doctor's appointment. I'm, like, I'm not opposed to it. It just, I never noticed it. Like it's always been that way, you know? Yeah. So I wound up going to the, the I go to University of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Hospital I go to. I go there with my brother, and uh, they do a CAT scan and all this fun stuff to me, and then they call me back into the office. And uh, I'm sitting there, small office, me and my brother, and the doctor comes in. She goes, hi, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good. She goes, um, yeah, you have like a, you have a mass in your chest. And and uh, yeah. and I'm like, all right. I said, all right, what do we got to do? And my brother turned as white as your wall and like kind of slumped in his chair. <laughs> yeah. And... I think he was ready to pass out. And that's how I, that's what I remember of that yeah. fun time. I met an amazing, an amazing team. When you, when you have cancer, they give you teams, they call them yeah. because you have an oncologist, you have a radiologist, you have everyone. There's so many different people. The first thing Dr. Mincer told me, that's, he's my oncologist. He's like, don't read anything online. Don't go to WebMD. You're not a doctor. I'm the doctor. He goes, listen to what I tell you. Do not read anything. Yeah. I go home. I'm like, I tell everybody. He said, don't read anything about it, blah, 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 this, yeah. that, and the other thing. And everybody's like this. This is it's not that long ago. Everybody's on their phones. They're yeah. looking and looking and looking. Right. And I can just see them all getting white. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, this is not good. So uh, they started. I found out in February, and I started getting treatments, I think, not even four weeks later. Oh, wow. I had 28 rounds of uh, radiation every day I went, except the weekends. Yeah. Every morning before work or wow. after work, depending on what happened, like how my week was, I would schedule it. Yeah. And you're sitting there and you're sitting in, in a basement with this machine that's, I wish turned me into the Hulk, but it didn't really work out that way. <laughs> I mean, it pretty much turned me into a puddle of mud. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that, that's what happened. I had that. And then I had surgery. I had surgery in May. I had radiation. Well, it was chemo and radiation. Yeah. I had chemo on Mondays radiation every day off on the weekends six weeks six weeks of chemo then i had my surgery yeah like i had a break in between because i was so weak right and then i had my surgery at the end of may and i think within two weeks i have a picture in my phone i was down the shore at beer fest in awesome awesome yeah i i still look like a puddle of mud then but i was yeah. there i was you're alive there. yeah you're there i was very much alive i had a feeding tube in me um that's a whole nother story <laughs> Um, but I was down ashore. I was freezing. It was in June, freezing cold with a hoodie on, and uh, all my friends were there. It was yeah. the best thing ever. It was it was phenomenal. Wor worst thing about that experience? What's the wor what was the worst thing you would say? The fear. I didn't. I was not afraid of dying. That's really. Number one. I was not afraid. I knew I wasn't going to die. I knew it from day one. Yeah. I, I was not going to die. I was. I didn't feel sick. Right. So I wasn't going to die. That's yeah. it. And just seeing everybody, it seemed like I was sick, but I had to make sure everybody else was okay. Yeah, I got you. It's yeah. like a weird thing. I had to make sure everybody else knew I was going to be okay, and that's all that mattered. Really? I was going to be fine. You, you don't want you don't want people to worry about you, or you know. I wasn't worried about me. Yeah, I'm Dave. I'm I'm dead for real with this. No, I, I was you. not. I believe you. I had no doubt in my mind when I talked to Mister and I talked to. Everybody else, they said they were, they were, we were going to take care of this and we were going to do this. Did they ever talk about percentages or <clears> any shit like that? Not until afterwards. Oh, really? Because then after, we were going to say like a month, two months after, yeah. after my, six months after my surgery, yeah. I'd walk in and my doctor would be like flat out. He, he was awesome. He was, he was that awesome. He's like, I can't fucking believe you. I'm like, yeah. 
I'm, I'm like, what? what's going on? He's like, he goes, nobody would ever know you, you were sick. I'm like, I wasn't sick. I had, I had what I had you took care of. That was it. Right. You know? And it was really cool because while I was going through all that, we would, I'd have to go in for chemo or for checkups and I would just sit there and talk to people. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, what's the matter with you? And when I was getting radiation, I had, I was, he was the biggest Michael Clark Duncan, the dude from yeah, the yeah. mile. Yeah, yeah. Real big black dude. And he was dark, dark. Yeah. And, and I'm sitting down there and I, I'm just, I have no idea. I can't sit there quiet. I got to talk to somebody. Right. Even if it's the wall, I'll talk to myself, but right. I'm like, what are you in for? And he looks at me and goes, we're not here for that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're right. I said, I'm sorry. I said, you know, I apologize. He's like, don't apologize. He goes, I just, he goes, I have a weird sense of humor. I said, oh, you found the right one, buddy. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. So he's like, I feel bad for you, man. That one going down your throat and everything. And I look at him. I'm like, prostate, dude, they're going up your ass. <laughs> and he looked at me. He goes, the fuck i'm like yeah dude sorry man <laughs> but we became we became tight because we all we both had to go for radiation at the same time all the time like every yeah, day yeah. we're here for a month you get to know somebody really quick yeah and uh i'd be like damn you all right dude and you you holding his ass and i'd be i come out and i'll be holding my throat he's like they get your buddy i'm like yeah you know <laughs> so we fun. would sit there we would actually sit there and talk to people and just be yo, you're gonna be all right, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, just stop kicking rocks. Yeah. Like, you're, you, if you feel you're gonna die, then you might as well just go sit in a corner and die. Yeah. And a lady, a lady screamed at me. I can't believe you said that to me. I'm like, why? If you don't feel you're gonna win, you're gonna lose. Right. You, why would you go into this thinking that it's gonna be skull and crossbones? Then you, you're, you know, you're getting poisoned. Yeah. You know, you're going through a ton of shit. Right. Just give it your best shot. Right. You know? Yeah. What's the alternative, right? The right. Alternative. You're, yeah. right. You're going to die. That's it. So yeah. I, honest to God, that was, again, recapping that whole thing. The worst part about that, it was just worrying about everybody else and not me. Because I don't, I'm me. I'll be all right. I'll always be all right. Is, uh, was there a silver lining, like a best thing that you could say or that you got out of it? I'm a survivor for one. I mean, I get to see, I know a lot of people who had, have had cancer. A lot of women, a lot of people in my life, a lot of women in my life had breast cancer. My ex wife, my mother in law. Yeah. Um, Kim and and Christine, they know who they are. I don't gotta give out list names, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they're my girls. They make every time I see them. Sharice just at her event, yeah. playing for Pink. Yeah, that I will go to that to the day I die. Right, and I will give everything I possibly ever can to yeah. that because it's such a, a phenomenal thing that she does for everybody. And I truly believe just from having cancer and going to see all the girls that are still there and seeing a couple of guys that I know had cancer there. Yeah. It means a lot that we're able to give back a little bit. Like right. even if it's an experience just to talk to somebody. Um, Frank has a friend that he actually asked me to go talk to during the summer and I did and and I hope he's doing well. I haven't spoke to him in a while. But yeah. I hope that dude's all right. But it, it's just giving people when at the worst time of their life. Yeah, just give just, them some hope. Some hope, man. Like I'm out nine years later, I'm fucking in a bar drinking like a like I'm seventeen again. Yeah. You know? I mean Life will go on, but you have to have that attitude. I mean, that's a, to me, that's 100% the craziest thing. You have to have that attitude. All right. How about, let's talk about some advice. Advice you would give 18-year-old version of you. If you can go back to and talk to your 18-year-old self, what would you tell yourself? Trying to get in sales as soon as possible. Pick your job because I love that job. Yeah. That, when I, I, this is, that's a major thing. When you, when you wake up for work every day and it don't feel like work, I mean, going to work is almost my outlet now. Right. It is so, I, I enjoy it just, and always strive to do the right thing. Right. That's, that's it. it. I mean, that's, that's the best thing. How about, what would the 18 year old version of you think of 51 year old you? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> really? This is what I turned into? <laughs> yeah. I really think that, I think that. What do you mean? Like, so t talk to me with me. Like you wouldn't, he, could he imagine that you would be this? version of you no because i was still locked up in a shell then i was more quiet i didn't yeah i'm definitely different than i than that kid yeah was. he wouldn't There's think no it, doubt. like he wouldn't think you like, what did he what happened in my life that i turned like this like you, you, he wouldn't be a man of me i mean no, i right, think right. we would get a little we'd be friends a little bit but you, you would know. be surprised that ricky's the mayor of south philly oh, i wish i was the mayor of south yeah, philly, yeah but you, you are it's your job and now fucking everybody knows ricky no oh no, stop no. all right how about uh, advice that you have for any bosses out there don't be a dick. Treat people the way you want to be treated. That's number one. Yeah. And don't hire hire the peer, people that you want to have work for you and to be so you can promote them. That's the number one thing. That to me is a boss. Make everybody 
teach them everything you know so that then they can move on. Yeah. They're not going to be your boss. There will yeah. be there'll be a boss somewhere else, but teach people. Let them say, hey, he mentored me to do everything I'm doing now, and I'm going to do the same thing for you. Yeah, the job protection thing that yeah, people yeah, do. People are so afraid. Their egos. Like, that's, yeah. I, <laughs> I definitely don't have an ego. So it's, I, it's funny. I, uh, I went to work for the city for a while. <clears throat> I get there. I'm taking over the department. Uh, one of the person, the person that was basically there running part of my job that I was going to have that was leaving. She was there and she was maybe there two more weeks. I go up to her and I say, you know, can we sit, can we sit down and talk and you, you, you know, let me know the lay of land, whatever. And she said, uh, how much money do you have? I said, none. See you later. I figured it out myself, but that was, yeah. that was the kind yeah. of, that was the kind of, again, I wasn't, she was retiring. So I, what the fuck was I? Right. What, what, we, right. It's, what was it's she, so what was she saving? You know, it's but, uh, ego, dude, it's, it's, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess she thought that I wasn't going to succeed, but I did. So, right. Um, exactly. In any event. But then what I did do is, uh, one of her, one of her friends that was there that literally started the program and had been there forever and was an older lady. I befriended her. She, I gained her trust because she realized I wasn't a shithead. And I learned more from that woman in six weeks than I could have learned in 60 years right? because, you know, because she was willing, willing to open up to me and, and give that. So, you know, again, that's a really great lesson, you know, and, you know, respecting people that have been there before you. you know. That's the same. It's respecting people. Yeah. That, that's what it comes down to. You should, you, people who don't get respect, don't get respect for a reason. Yeah. How about young workers? you have any advice for young people out there starting their careers? Get off your phone. <laughs> yeah. Get I hear you. That's that's number one. Like that phone is not gonna give you a paycheck. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Just get off your phone. You're there to work, get your job done, and that's it. Like I can use a couple examples. I get I go to work, I start my day every day at eight o'clock. My day is started. I'm already in the books already before then, but I walk out my door at eight o'clock. I go work, I get my job done. People see me, oh, what are you doing home? It's three o'clock in the yeah, afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Three o'clock, dude, I was up before you. Right. I was working before you. Yeah. I did more work before nine o'clock than you. Yeah. And now I'm done. And now I'm going to go take care of what I got to take care of. Yeah. Oh, I love your job. I'm on your job. Well, you can't do it. Because you're with, not with your mentality, you can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I get that every once in a while. I'll, I'll stop in the middle of the day. I'll play a couple games of chess online. Yeah, and people will come in like I don't fucking hide it because I don't care because I get my work done. Right, but they don't realize that I just I was up at five thirty in the morning answering emails and, and doing right. things, you know. So, but anyway, but uh, I get that too. But oh, that's the truth. It's a it's oh, a major thing. It's uh, our generation has a different work ethic. Yeah, we learned from they say the greatest generation, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Our, our grandparents and, really, right? and I mean, yeah. I mean, I say my grandparents worked in a store. This is the great. I can tell you about this. My grandparents had the store on Chadwick Street. Yeah. We'd be sitting, eating. It didn't matter. Christmas dinner. It didn't matter. And somebody would knock on the side door and be like, I need lettuce. I need a head of lettuce. I can't believe I forgot the lettuce. My grandfather would get up from the table, wipe his mouth, go next door, and hand it to him. They'd give him whatever it was. He's like, I don't, Merry Christmas. Go be yeah. with your family. Right. I believe my brother and I both learned that from the, from the store experience. Like, Take care of people because right. it'll wind up working out. Yep. How about, um, I think you already sort of answered this question with talking about cancer, but advice for people to deal with whatever struggle they have in their life. You know, any advice for that? Most work? most of the stress you have in your life is called by, caused by yourself. Yeah. You dwell on things. You sit in a corner and everybody does it. Like, uh, they're going to fight with somebody. And they, they picture it out in their mind how they're going to fight this person. Yeah. And then they wind up, Going outside and they're like, oh, hey, Dave, how you doing? Oh, you don't have a fight with me? Oh, and you just spent two days in the house. Yeah, worrying about Planning about, about how you're going to beat this person up. And yeah. They have no idea what you're even talking about. Right. We cause our own stress. So analyze things. Before you send that send button, before you hit that send button on that text. Yeah. Think about it. Wait an hour. Go back to them. Like, all right. Do yourself even a bigger favor. Write it in the notes. Don't write it on the text because if you fuck up, you're gonna make everybody pissed off for no reason. Yeah. Are you speaking to my soul? God, right well, now, dude, right? good people, man. People, <laughs> you know, birds of a feather, man. No, but you know, I, you know how I struggle with that sometimes. Oh, I know. Angry uh, Dave. It's the funniest thing. It's Angry Dave, and I've never, 
I mean, I've seen you mad, but I've never would say that you're an angry person ever. No, no, it's just when I get there, it's right. It don't come. Down. <laughs> it's it's, it's it. out of control. Right, but, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's out of. And I'm I'm better at going home these days, but but you know, growing up, that's exactly yeah. yeah. How about the best advice you ever got? Anything like that you can think of, or advice you live by, something like that. Well, number one, you have two ears and one mouth. Listen yeah. to before you speak. That's number one. Yeah, that's always number one. That's our number one rule in sales. But two, always. Take time to realize what what you're ready to spit out of your mouth. The the, the damage that can cause to somebody. Yeah, it it really it's it, it really makes a difference. And I think like this to me having this conversation with you is is awesome because it makes you it makes me remember everything I have to do to keep it that path straight. You know. Yeah, yeah. I've th- I said it many times about or the way I think about it is, um, it's not what you say to people; it's how you say it. Right. Oh yeah. Well, I mean that's sales. You know I, that's I am, sales, but that's also I am wicked with my tongue, and I've learned from yeah. that. I am. I. I always. I would say some mean shit to people. Yeah, I'm really great at it. I've been great at it my whole life. It's part of like actually crushing people with words. Yeah, crushing yeah, people oh, with words. Yeah. But I mean, it's actually part of my family like mantra. You know, like that's my grandfather was fucking brutal. You know, like I, I, I've seen it happen. He just would, and and not that what he was saying was wrong. You know it's what just I mean? the way he said the just, tone, just, just with the with the anger behind it, just mean, yeah, just hurting people's souls. You know, yeah. and they, they don't don't I, ever. I've, I've honestly tried. I've tried to teach myself not to do. I don't yeah. read books. I listen to books because I don't yeah. have time. My yeah. ADD kicks in. I'm, there's no shot I can sit there. No, I don't read books either. You know that I, it's, I, a person that uh, for work reads and writes for my entire career. Right. I don't read like that. I don't, I, I'm a podcast listener. Yeah, me too. It's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. That's how I get my, I consume my information in, cause of the ADD like right. in, in, in spurts. Yeah. I can't sit down that long for doing anything. That's exactly it. I would listen to podcasts when I was driving my old job. Yeah. I would drive a lot and I would listen. I mean, I would be able to a, a Rogan podcast in, in one day, three yeah. hours. I mean, I yeah. did that almost four. I did that was three years. I was yeah. able to listen to that. That was actually my favorite part of being a lawyer is when I was on the road a lot and just being able to sit in my car and and just whatever, listen to music or listen to whatever. Right. You know, I know you might not like NPR, you fucking Nazi, but uh, I think. <laughs> Eddie, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, how about like a worst advice you ever got? Uh, you think about it like that? I, I know I've definitely got bad advice from people, but they were from people who weren't great people. Right. So, so yeah. it was really good advice from them because I learned not to be like them. Yeah. That kind of thing. Right. Yeah. I, dude, I can, I'm honestly, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky to have very good people in my life. Yeah. And I've never had somebody that I can honestly say that I hate. I've said I hate you people, but it, it's not. Right. Well, there's just very few people on that list that I just will avoid not to have that confronta- confrontation right. because then I will go bananas. And yeah, yeah. we talked about this before. You get mad to that point where you just click off and yeah, yeah. And, and, just, and, and, and you're going to do whatever you got to do to make sure that person, if I can't hurt you, I'm going to mentally make your mind bend because I'm going to crush you with words. Really? I'm going to say some nasty, nasty yeah. shit to you. And it's going to be true and mean. Right. Yeah. That's the worst part. It's going to be true yeah. because I don't, I don't do that to people. And I, I just put a, I put a, a, a clip of uh, this little person is like, like a, he's a midget or a little person talking about how his dad prepared him for life. Right. He was like, you know, my dad knew I was different. He didn't want, you know, he was realistic about it. And we like ran through, he knew I was going to get picked on. We ran through scenarios of, about how to deal with that. And basically his dad taught him to say things that were true. You know, you know, and I learned, listen, I was a little dude in a, in a tough neighborhood and I was the young, pretty much the youngest kid in the neighborhood and they tried it on me all the time. And, you know, when you're seven or eight years old, I was going in and like, not, I never showed that weakness in front of my father, but I I would go in and like be like upset and cry. And, and then finally I just snapped and then did it. And I had a couple fights and I beat the shit out of some people, realized that I wasn't a pussy and they stopped bothering me Bobbing, that, right. they stopped bothering me that way and then they still tried to they still tried to pick on me call me sure call my dad fat and then i just start saying real shit like yeah well your dad's a cokehead yeah 
<laughs> you, I saw your mother in the court the other night. Yeah, your own welfare. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? And then then it just stops, you know? Right. The the, the ultimate one that I had was a, a kid, and I, I, I don't want to say his name, but he, uh, he's fucking, he was one of these kids that was really good at, like, that snaps, like, mm-hmm. your mom's so short, whatever. Right. And he just kept going and going, and he's talking about my dad. And, fu- you know, and everybody's laughing, everybody's laughing, having a good time, laughing at me. I said, yeah, but at least my dad's not dead. Right. And it like the fucking record stopped yeah. and literally never did it to me again. He walks away, goes away crying. And everybody was like, dude, that was fucked up. I'm like, he's the one who it talks- started it. Right. There he's the go. one who started it. Don't yeah. fuck it. That's exactly it. Anyway. It's, it's the same way. If you can't dish it out, man. Yeah. If you can dish it out, you better be able to take it back. Uh, how about a person that was most impactful to you? Who, who would be that one person? Man, there's a lot of people. I'm going to say there's two people that I always try like geez, I can't even say that there's a lot dude, there's a lot of people in my life. I yeah. mean one thing that I always I always do is make sure I don't want my family to ever be embarrassed of something that I've done. Yeah. That I mean more than anything, I mean there's 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 a million people in my life. I mean Is there somebody that you look up to the most out of your life? Or you know that I, Yeah, I mean my my parents, both of my parents, I mean they they both didn't have great jobs. Neither of them were Neither of them were um, college graduates or anything like that. My dad was a veteran, so I looked up from, for that because yeah. it, it, it's it's awesome. I mean, he might not have gone in by his choice, but he went in and yeah. he, and he did what he had to do. He didn't run, right? That's number one. I mean, my they both they both worked their asses off. Yeah, I mean, we have a short house. We're lucky enough to have that. I mean, right? And they didn't. It's not like we had anything. I've never wanted for anything in my life, right? So I think my my parents definitely. There's yeah. no doubt they do. You and your you and your brother always have a good relationship. Always, always. I will never let that that. No, I will never let him be mad at me. And if we are, I'll tell him what the fuck's the matter. Like like. Right. I will not. You know, he's my best friend in life. That's yeah. It. You have an event that was the most impactful to you. I don't. Yeah, dude. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I every. I live my life. I love everything. You know. I mean, you yeah. see me. I, I I try and have a party. At every event, it, it's everything's important because they're all memories that you're making and you're yeah. with different people every time. Right. Just trying to live day by day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I live every day and make it like it's my last, dude. I do. I want to have a party all the time. I don't want to see people upset. Yeah. I it's And I make a choice. I, I, I mean, I definitely do things that are not perfect but i mean like, Bro, none of us are perfect you know but i mean i i yeah. try I, I don't want people to be like oh my god what the fuck's he doing here now again he's yeah right but, you know but I, I i definitely have fun and i'm not gonna stop having fun yeah all right so talking about not being perfect i need a couple embarrassing stories please so i listened to the podcast i listened to 54 of them i think already because i'm 55 uh-huh. so i know number one story you like to talk about shitting yourself so i was prepared for this one all right, so let's all right. Let's start with a time you shut yourself. All right, so I was in school. Uh huh. I was going to school for plumbing. <laughs> yeah. Kind of funny, right? <laughs> we were under the way the school was set up. It was like you were in a house. Yeah. I was in a crawl space in the basement. Uh huh. I farted and I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh my, oh my, oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, this is definitely. I gotta go. I gotta go. So I start trying to shimmy through. A, it's a real crawl space. It's small. Yeah. You shit yourself at school? I shit myself at school. So what, how did Plumbing you? Plumbing school. How, I had 800 toilets in a row, and I shit myself. <laughs> how did you deal with that? So you, I uh, Well, I had coveralls. Not yet. I had overalls on, so the bib overalls. Yeah. I just walked to the bathroom, took off the coveralls, took off my jeans, uh-huh. got my underwear, threw them in the trash, uh-huh. cleaned up. We had... I had everything. It was a plumbing school, so I had a shower. We oh, so you took a fucking shower. I, I cleaned myself up. I they're like, "What were you doing?" I'm like, "I, I, I honestly then like when I was at school like that with yeah. the guys, I didn't care. I'm like, I shit myself. I had to take a shower, man. <laughs> and 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 that's the easiest way. Like you were saying, how somebody's going to try and make fun of you. Yeah, I took the fun out of it. I yeah, told yeah, him, yeah. I told him flat out, I shit myself. My yeah. underwear in a bathroom. It's things like it's. <laughs> Oh, like death in there. Yeah, it just it's over now, right? What it's over. Say? That's it. You know. And then I was like, the, the, "Oh, Ricky took a shit in school." <laughs> and it was funny, and it wasn't embarrassing, so it was good. How about a drunk or high story? Oh, drunk stories. I have many drunk stories. You do? I never saw you drunk. Not, not once. <laughs> uh, we'll go. We'll go with a high story. All right. Funniest thing. Oh, my brother and I were going to a party. Yeah. And we both got 
unnecessarily baked. Yeah. Michael got so bad that he had to go home. I got so bad I just sat on the couch and like was watching Halloween like lights and things like that. I couldn't move. Yeah. But that's a high story. Another high story. <laughs> I'll give you another. This is very recent. <clears throat> I was laying in my bed and I did an edible. Uh-huh. And I didn't think I thought I was able to do stronger than I was able to because <laughs> I found the ceiling fan blade that was moving that that one blade made me cold. <laughs> the one blade? The one blade that made me cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. <laughs> Drunk stories, I think I, I just have too many of them. I just I tend to get myself in a little bit of trouble, but never in bad trouble. So it's no, good. no, you're never mean though. I've never no, seen. No, I don't want to be mean. That's I don't. That's the other thing. I don't like drunk. I don't like mean drunks. Man. Yeah. Oh, it gets on my nerves so bad. No, I'm not. A just mean. go home. I'm actually happier when I'm drunk generally until it gets <laughs> until it gets to a point where I yeah. Pay. But then you just disappear. I just disappear. Where would Dave go? Where you? Yeah, I I have perfected the Irish goodbye, my friend. One hundred percent. Uh, how about a time a puke? Pee or fart story, separate from the shit story. I was an altar boy, St. Monica's. We had crazy masses where he had like eighty priests on on the altar and all that. Yeah. And uh, I was sitting on the top of the top altar with all the priests and all that, and I was one of the, the good altar boys. I was in white the white cassock. Yeah. And I farted right on top of it. Right, it was like midnight mass, Christmas. I definitely did that enough that the guys were la- like they're they're guys they're priests but they still they, they they laughed at me. It was bad. Yeah, that was bad. So I uh, so today when I at right around the time you texted me about the podcast, I was sitting downstairs. We were watching Saturday Night Live, a rerun of Saturday Night Live, with the my two kids and my wife. And dude, I farted. I cleared the room out. Really, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Funny. It was fucking bad, bro. I got a drunk story. I, 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 yeah. No, a throwing up story. All right. Also. Yeah. So my brother moved to Jersey. Um, my son was born already. Yeah. So we, we, my uh, brother's in-laws, my, we'd always have a party there. We, like, we'd party. Like we started having parties together because it was easier to have the whole family there. It was easy. Yeah. It was fun. Michael and I were supposed to be going up with uh, the frogs, I believe. Yeah. And we're having... The New Year's Eve party in Jersey, which I've not done many times because I always like being in the city. Right. I just love being in the city. Yeah. And uh, I drank. We drank at the party. We we had like 19 bottles of wine drank. Oh, my God. All together. Yeah. So we're at my brother's in-law's house, Mike Duffy's house. Not the Duffy's from 17th Street, different Duffy's. Yeah. So <laughs> we're uh, we're leaving his house, and we have to go to my brother's house to get the costume. So... We're going to go over there, get showered, get dressed, and go. So my brother goes, we're driving. We're driving down the road. And I'm like, I'm like Mike, pull over. Mike, pull over. I pull over, and it snowed like like the week before. So you have all the amounts of snow on the side of the road. I threw up red wine. I threw up so much red wine. It was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Like It was coming out of my nose, everything. We drive to my brother's house. I'm like, I'm going to lay on the couch. You take your shower. When you're done your shower, come down and get me. I'll take mine. And I'll wake you up, and then we'll go. Well, I woke up, and I'm watching TV, and the frogs were on TV. <laughs> My brother's shower was running, but he was not in the shower. <laughs> and I wake him up. I'm like, yo, we missed it. Don't even worry about it now. So we go back, <laughs> take a handful of Tylenol, go back. To, we're driving back to the house, and he's like, look, look over there. And it looked like a deer got murdered. It was me from all the red wine. It was it was it was horrible. It was honestly horrible. It was a, it was an epic time to be with my little brother. It's the greatest fun thing ever. But yeah, yeah, it wasn't it yeah. wasn't good, man. How about a time you got caught having sex or caught somebody having? Oh, all right. Um, remember down the airport when you used to be able to drive around the back of the airport? I do. Yeah. Well, no, it was my ex-wife. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it was thirty years ago. We were down there. We we're in the back of my Dodge Daytona, and. uh the cops came. <laughs> they put the big light on. Yeah. Not only did that happen, the cops were there. They weren't regular cops. They were CSX cops to let us to know that the train was coming. Oh, Jesus. So God. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't arrest you or anything? No, they were laughing. They were hysterical yeah. laughing. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. They didn't make her get out of the car, which was really cool. I just jumped out of the car, ran, got in, and drove off. 
All right. I got my 20 questions. You ready? Yeah, let's go. All right. Obviously, it's the Angry Dave podcast. What makes you angry? Stupid people. Not stupid people, like not not somebody who's mentally not challenged. Yeah, not smart. When right. when smart people ask stupid questions, like like just something. And I and I always say there's never a dumb question, but there's a stupid question. Like, and I can't even give you an example right now because it's just I can't think of something that's going to make me mad that fast that like like that. Is it people that just they're they're just not being considerate of? of anything yes yeah. yeah when you ask you like well why not well why not like you're a grown yeah. adult you're you're not a child dude stop this like right this is why this is, this is exactly yeah. why the pe- people that ask questions because they don't like the answer that you gave them right they right their no is not because they don't know it's because they want it to be their way yeah you know? i uh i used to get people really mad when i was practicing law and they would ask me the same question 15 different ways yeah and i and i would say stuff like i I I know you're saying you don't understand, but you you understand. You just don't like my answer. Right. No matter how many times you ask me, it's going to be the same answer. It's going to be the same answer, whether you like it or not. I agree. People get so fucking. It never that never calmed the situation. Down. Never. It, it's like telling a girl to calm down. Yeah, yeah, it really is. What is the one? What makes you happy? Seeing other people happy. Yeah. What are you most proud of? My kid. My son. My son. Yeah. All right. If you could have done one, any one other thing professionally, what would you have liked to do? You ever think about that? Uh, no. Really? No, I've never, I've never, I love what I do right now, but I mean, I never, I mean, I was never good at sports growing up, so I never could be an athlete. I knew that. I mean, I played football in grade school, but I was never really great. Um, right. Plumbing was fun, but it was backbreaking. Yeah. Mechanicy at thirty, right? I think maybe like I should have got, I should have stayed in music more. Like I was, I always used to help a uh, corny DJ when I was a kid. Yeah, and if I would have stuck with that, I think because I love it when when Cuzzy when Cuzzy Joe goes over there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stokes now, yeah, I absolutely love it. And I break his balls all night long. Yeah, we were there, we were there him, Sunday. You were DJing. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. I because you know why it makes people happy and they get right. people out of the chair and I make people dance. Yeah, yeah. If you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? We got to skip that question. Really? Yeah. All right. I have, I have two answers that, yeah, they're, they're, they're too close to hit, too close to home. Okay. All right. I'll let you go on it. Yeah. How about uh, one, one thing you could change about the world? Man, it, it's just get along. Yeah. That's, that, dude, that's my, that's the way I am. I don't want, I don't like seeing people mad at each other. Right. It's horrible. I mean, I don't care. Black, white, green, doesn't matter. Democrat, Republican, communist, just stop. We're all people, man. Yeah. We, all, we all bleed red. That's it. Like, stop. How about uh, a thing that is most, what is most important to you? My family. Yeah. My brother, my sister-in-law, my ex-wife, my son. Yeah. Yeah. My mom. What is most unreasonable about you? My temper. Really? Yeah. When I hit it, I lose it. And, and, that, and that's when I go into, I will kill you with words. Yeah. And it's not a, it's not a big va- vocabulary I use. I'll just um oh, yeah, you don't it's need horrible. To. I mean, to be honest, the more the more simple it is, the the more it comes. Yeah. Um, how about an everyday struggle that you have? You know, like mine with Italian meats. Oh yeah. Well, um, well, I, I'm, I'm not being able to eat everything I like to because of what I went through. Like yeah. I can't. I, it's not that it's like I can't have mashed potatoes. I loved mashed potatoes. I, oh, remember uh, Close Encounters when he made the mountain of mashed potatoes? Yeah. I would make that. My mother would make me a bowl just that big for me. That's, really? I loved mashed potatoes. I just can't eat them no more. It's really? like something so it's, frivolous. It's just too heavy for you? Yeah. Too, I can't eat steak. I mean, we went to, we went to eat with, for Michael's birthday. Yeah. That, that all came up. Oh, uh, yeah. Before we left, it came up. That but, sucks. It, yeah. That sucks. Uh, how about your best quality? I'm a good, I'm a good, I'm a good friend. I got your back no matter what. I don't care. Yeah. It's like in a movie, yo, we got to go. I can't tell you what we're going to go do, but I'm, I'll be, oh, man, let's go. I got you. We're going to do it. How about a type of music that you love? What is your favorite type of music? Old freestyle. Yeah. Like the Latin freestyle. Yeah. Little Susie. Deneen. Yeah. Late TKA. 80s. Late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. yeah. New York, Philadelphia. Yeah. 
free, had, freestyle. As many records back in the day. Perry yeah. Angelosi getting dressed back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that was that. I love that man. That's uh, else. So, so if you were if you ran a casino marketing department, right, and you had a I don't know nine hundred person event center, would you schedule a freestyle night? One hundred percent. Would you schedule it maybe in like February or March, right before the summer comes? Yeah, to get everybody going. Are you doing that now? Is that what you're saying, Dave? No, but that's what I've been trying to convince these motherfuckers well, they're gonna to do, do it. for two years. Yo, I can call Deneen. I, Dude, I, 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 listen, I know people who know her very well. Listen, I mean, I can. I know for a fact that we could get that whole crew for the amount of money that they're going to go Dude, pay Pete Davidson. Yeah, beat that. Beat him. I don't. I don't like him at all. It's not. It's not. It's really a, celeb. There's celebrities I get mad about. I don't like him at all. I'm sorry. He he's starting oh, to endear he himself on me. I understand I, he had a rough, tough life, and I would never wish that on anybody. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I just don't. I don't know what it is about him. It, really, I don't know what it is. I, I think it's the way he looks. It's horrible to say that. <laughs> he's just, got a, he does have a punchable face. I'll give you that. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> and he's he's definitely he's definitely witty because I mean he's a comedian. Yeah, he's so a, he can definitely kill you with words too. That's all he would have to do. Yeah, uh, Pete Davidson might have to go down in the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about the type of music that you hate? I don't think I hate. Like even I'm like I like country music now. I went to Nashville. I love that too. I the craziest thing is that people say they listen to like classical music and it calms them. Yeah. And it makes me bananas. I really? oh I it's like, really? Yeah. Like there's no bass to it and it's like yeah. I mean and it, you know, if you really think about it, it does get frantic. A lot of it is a, is frantic. You hear the viol- I mean, I love the violin too. Yeah, yeah. I love it. But when you hear him Yeah, but it's up up tempo and fast and yeah, I love that, but I also want to hear boom, boom in the background. Like it's, it's what I like. Because there's no bass. Huh? Right. I, I don't know what it is. I'm waiting for a bass line to kick in. <laughs> don't kick in. How about uh, if you can meet anyone in history, dead or alive, would there be anybody that you could think of that you always wanted to meet? It could be personal. It could be a celebrity. Anybody. So a real person, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of people. Like, I, 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 different decades. Like Sylvester Stallone, I would like to meet. Still, yeah, still, and I don't know if it's because of Rocky, but I just I like that dude. He's yeah, cool. I mean, Seems cool. Yeah, there's like like I. It's kind of crazy, like the cast of Expendables. All those guys. Everybody, every one of these had in there. Like, yeah, I, I like. I guess that that like that the genre of action films that they were in. Yeah, I like it. Like you know, yeah, because we kind of grew up on them, right? Yeah, I mean everything. Yeah, all that. How about like how about a person that you would like to talk to again in your past that you you know My Uncle Tony. Yeah, one hundred percent. Why? What was it about him? He's just a cool guy. He was stony. He was. He's. Yeah. He was. He. He. He had so many interests that he loved cars. He loved computers. Like when computers were first coming out, he was yo yo yo. Cut! You got to come over. He had like a raspy voice. He smoked Winston cigarettes and he smoked a lot of them. Yeah. He loved cars, but his ashtray in the car was a disaster. <laughs> right. Like he he would play the saxophone. He he was just he was a man's man, I guess. Yeah. Kind of thing. Not that my dad wasn't. It was just Yeah. It was just different. Like it wasn't my dad. So he right. he would he was able he was he did different things with me that I guess as I was growing up my dad really couldn't kinda of do. Like I'd steal yeah. a cigarette from my uncle and he wouldn't get mad. Right. Like, he was just he was a musician. He was just he was a he's he was a he was definitely be somebody hands down I would love to be able to speak to again. Yeah. Hang out with a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of hours. That's all I would need. Uh, how about your you karaoke song? If you sung karaoke, what would you want to sing? Bro, I, I I'll sing anything, man. I'm really? Like, yeah. You love karaoke? I I just love singing. You hear me at the bar. I yeah, just yeah, I, uh, even yeah. We put the jukebox on. I'll sing anything. Yeah, I, mean, I really. Well, we fucking scream at the jukebox all day. Yeah, I mean for real. I mean yeah. it's just I think it's an outlet too to get rid of stress for me. Yeah, it's fun. I mean we just have fun. People look at you like you're crazy. You're singing like I'm like yeah. I don't care if I sing good or not. I don't matter. care. Yeah, I just want to have fun, man. It's 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 it. What is it? So, any what song? What song would you karaoke? It takes two from Rob Bass. I, I mean, Run DMC. Any any word, any song that I know the words to very well, yeah. I will belt out. And then I'm even finding out that I don't know all the words of the songs I thought I knew, but I still <laughs> sing it anyway. You know, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, all right, if you were arrested, what would your friends and family think happened if they didn't know? Drunk driving. Drunk driving. Drunk driving. Fuck. Yeah. I don't. I haven't done. That. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say it right now. I haven't done that, and I have not driven my car while intoxicated 
in it's it's over four years now. Yeah, absolutely. Like no, like no drink. I will not drink and drive. No, no, you don't do it. But yeah, I probably agree. I drive with people who drink and drive. Yeah, I don't know any of them. <laughs> I don't know any of them either. But <laughs> oh god, it's local. I, I heard that they that these people just drive local. Yeah, I don't I don't believe that that fact any longer. <laughs> oh. Okay, favorite place you've ever been. Oh man, Belize, 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 and Iceland's right behind it. You were in Iceland too. Yeah. Wow. I was supposed to go. This is the craziest thing. After I got sick, I the, my first bucket list thing I was going to do was go to, to a Key West. Yeah. And now it's nine years later, and we're finally I'm finally going to Key West in April. Oh really? Yeah. But that's funny. Yeah, I I think right after right after I got sick, my brother he's like, oh we're going to Iceland. I'm like I'm in. Yeah. Right. And and I'm like I don't care I'll I'll figure it out I I'll, I mean, it's it's, kind it's it's beautiful there right It's amazing dude you, you, yeah like, yeah it, it's it's it I mean I'm sure there's just as beautiful places in the United States too, so that's kind of a thing I want to do now I I want to start seeing more of the United States because there's amazing places I right mean, You can go to a place and it still look the same but I mean I got to see the Aurora Borealis when I was there with my brother on my brother's birthday Yeah that's pretty it's, awesome the, 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 We're eating dinner for my brother's birthday and. The, the major D comes over. He was like, "I'm so sorry to interrupt you." And they're very polite over there. Yeah, they look scary as hell because they're big people. Yeah, and right. I'm five eight, and this dude's like six three. Yeah, yeah. blonde hair, blue eyes, yeah, all, all Viking, chis- skull. chiseled, yeah. right? Yeah, and he's like, "I just want to let you know right now that that the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, is out here right now, and it never happens in the city." And I'm like, "Where well, we can go?" He goes, "Go right out front of the door," and we look at the door. You can just see it. It That's was awesome. The most amazing thing to make you realize that you're a speck in the in the universe. Yeah. It's so amazing the power of that place. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely fun. Uh how about your favorite curse word? Fuck. Your favorite sound? You have a favorite sound. I yeah. Maybe any kind of sound that makes like sound like like Venmo when you're getting Venmo, somebody Venmo's you like <laughs> <"Cha-ching."> <laughs> yeah. any kind of thing like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like money sound, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. How about your least favorite sound? Uh, people throwing up. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, aw- that's, that's pretty sounds, awful. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Are you? Are you a? Th- do you throw up if you listen to people throw up? No, but if I see somebody throw up, I'm losing it. Really? Oh yeah. I'm a. Uh, I'm a weak stomach that way too. Yeah, I have a hard time. I I gotta leave the room. Yeah. Yeah. I can watch. I can watch. I, I, I can hear it. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. But if I see it, oh, I don't know why the heck it does it. You know, I got food poisoning like a month ago. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I threw up for like literally 16 hours straight. I remember saying yeah. It was the most awful experience ever. It really was. I, you lost eight pounds. I remember saying fucking that. Fucking eight. <laughs> that, was, that was after rehydrating, by the way. It's horrible. Oh, my God. So I, I was down like 13 pounds like when I when I finally stopped throwing up, and then I gained a few back just by hydrating but anyway but yeah my my voice was so hoarse at the end like i couldn't even talk it was bad anyway all right last question uh what what do you want to be remembered for when it's all said and done being a good person that's it that's it yeah just be a good person i didn't i didn't ask you this question do you you don't really have an angry dave story do you i'll pause this or not we were at um it was when we first started the pandemic time. We were hanging out at a club. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody did something to you, and I don't know what they did. You don't know. I, what they did. I, I don't know even know what they did, but I, I saw you did this thing, and I and, did, that. and and you went after him, and 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 I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? They're like these bouncers are here. They're like, what the fuck, dude? And they're like, oh, come on, Dave, sit down, relax, relax. And they knew you. They didn't know him, so it was very good. But I don't know, I don't know what that dude did, but I I saw you go after him, and. Yeah. <laughs> that was like the only time I've seen you do that to somebody. And that was when we first started hanging out. Yeah. Was Frankie there? I don't remember. I don't think I, I don't think he was because there's another. Yeah. I don't care that people know that I go to strip clubs every once in a while. Um, But anyway, so I used to uh, frequent uh, my strip club, the cheerleaders very often for a while there. Very often enough that they people knew who I was in there because I was hanging out with them. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a story that some of my baseball friends have of when I we took we we took them there one time and it was they they felt like it was a scene from Goodfellas, 
because we walked in and everybody knew us. Yep. And we had, we didn't have to pay to cover and we didn't have to get rid of weapons. And- yeah, we we could walk, we could walk through the metal detectors and didn't matter in any event. Yeah. Well, and I went after him. I don't even remember this. It was the outside. Oh, it was outside? It was, no, remember when when they had the, the outside? Oh. They, they had the tent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, he was talking. Oh, I do remember. So the dude was talking shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. All right. Well, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. You have anything else, buddy? Did I miss anything? No, I'm just happy I got here, dude. I'll have you totally, out here, too. Totally <laughs> different than what I thought it was going to be. I'm was it okay? That. Yeah, I love it. All right, good. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right. Now well, I want to come a regular like Frank. Yeah, I would love for you to come a regular. <laughs> uh, this is fun. Now you got to get Danny to uh, uh, stop being a pussy and get on here, too. He's going to be a hard sale. I know he won't do it. But and you should get Angry Ernie. That would be fun together, right? Then. <laughs> Angry Ernie. Yeah, yeah Ernie's got stories. Ernie's got great stories. Ernie's got a great baseball story involving me. You, you know that story, right? I don't know. I'll save it. I'll save, I'll save it, it, though, it. for. Save I'll tell it. you off air. So maybe if Ernie comes on. You can tell that story. Yeah, definitely. But I appreciate it very much, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for being on. Until next time. Until next time. We're out. Peace.